So let's, let's get into it. Today I want to talk to you about God's property. God's property. How many of those are some things that are, that, that are property? If it's your property, how many of you know that the, 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 they say that, that right now that there's, there's new mandates that allow people just to kind of squat in any property they want to as long as they want to? How many of you know that that's, that's not, that's, that, was in, that was in Europe a long time ago. I mean, we, it's just now happening here. means there's a movement of socialism and Marxism that's happening in our nation that you can't kick anyone out of a property if they live there. And how many of you know possession is, is nine-tenths of the law? Someone say possession is nine-tenths of the law. It's important that you know that whatever possesses you or whatever you possess, there's ownership in it. And God wants to remove things out of your life that don't belong there. And he wants to give you things that belong there. And he wants to bring you back into that right place. Amen? Amen. Today we're talking about God's property. I want to I just say, first of all, there's a couple of things that God's going to repossess and, and, and take place in people's bodies. Diabetes is going to get healed today. Stage four cancer is going to be healed and lupus. Of course, there's going to be so many other things, but those are the three things that I've started praying for this morning as I went into prayer, praying for the services. The Lord said, get ready. Diabetes is healed today. Stage four cancer, cancer is going away and lupus is being healed. God wants to set you free. Uh, These are things that don't belong in the body of Christ. If they don't belong in Jesus, they don't belong in you. How many of you believe that's true? So let's turn to Mark chapter five, let's turn to Mark chapter five, verse one, it says, and then they came to the other side of the sea, the country of the Gadareans. And when he had come out of the boat, this is Jesus, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. In verse three, when he had, when he, when he, he, who had his dwelling amongst the tombs, And no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him. The shackles broken in pieces. This is strength, isn't it? This is demonic strength. How many of you know we have something more powerful than this? Neither could anyone tame him. I want you to know there's, it seems like there's an untamed world out there, but there's an anointing that's coming upon Awaken to tame the untamable. And always night and day, verse 5, always night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped, which I, I, I want you to know that a form of worship is thanksgiving. He ran and worshipped Jesus, fell, in, fell at his feet, and then there's a shift in his mood. First he worships, that's the introduction that he has to Jesus, then there's a shift in his mood. In verse 7 it says, and he cried out with a loud voice saying, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by, the, by, by God, I implore you by God, do not torment me. Now he's calling on the name of God to get free from torment. And the torment is happening because Jesus showed up. Can I tell you that there's times that you're going to show up and you're going to be the tormentor? Oh, you guys don't want that yet. I'm sorry. This, that was probably for the 830. Oh, is this, is, am I with the right group? I want, you, I want you to know there's such anointing and such power in you that when you show up, things that don't belong there start to get interrupted. God's looking for people that will show up to, to the right place at the right time. It may feel like the wrong place in the wrong time, but it's the right place at the right time. And when you get there, you're going to awaken something. You're going to shake something up. And here, this man who is full of demons, been living in the tombs, he says, listen, I, I implore you by God, a demon-possessed person. You guys aren't tracking with me. When, you, when, you, when Jesus shows up in you, it's going to confront everything and it's going to make even demons call on God. You guys didn't, come on somebody, you, you, even demons are going to call out on God when, Lord help me, when you show up. In verse 8, it says, and he said to him, he said, uh, don't, don't, don't kick us out. In verse 9, it says, don't torment. And then he said to him, come out of the man. Jesus said, you unclean spirit. And then, he, then they asked, what is, then he asked, what is your name? And he answered and said, my name is Legion. Legion is 16,000, a number that's associated to legion is 16,000 in number. So he's saying, my name is legion. I have 16,000 in in me. He says, for there are many of us here. And then he says, well, if you're going to kick me out, don't kick me out of this country. How many know this important that you know the territory that you are called to? 
How many of you know it's important that you know what, what, what it's, I, I, I thought to myself, it's amazing that this thing said, yes, kick us out of here, we'll go, but don't kick us out of this territory. I want you to know God has sent awakened church to kick some things that have been trying to hold this territory down, to kick it out, to break it out, to destroy its work. God wants to release the, it, God wants to release a church and a people that have territory taking, anointing. And Jesus said, I permit you to go into the swine. The demons leave, 16,000 plus demons leave the swine, leave the man and go into the swine. And the pigs are saying, no, not, you're not going to do that to us. We would rather die. <laughs> Come on, somebody, than be filled with a demonic spirit. Even pigs know not to mess with certain things that The pigs ran off, ran off and, and killed themselves in the cliff, off the cliff. And I realized that there's something that's going on in the earth right now that the enemy is so interested in con controlling humanity, controlling humans, controlling the will of a human. A pig, pig in, has no will, doesn't have the same will as us and cho chose immediately life or death. We have the power to live with something that we shouldn't live with. And I want you to make a choice. I'm not going to live with death. I'm going to live with life. Come on. You have the choice. A pig didn't have the choice. I wish I had somebody here. A pig doesn't have the choice and it made the decision. It was better to die than to live like this. And yet a child of God will live what you're not supposed to live with. You will live in what you're not supposed to live in. And I'm here to tell you that breaks today. The power of condemnation, shame, guilt, whatever it is, it breaks off of your life this morning. See, I found, I found that it was interesting in 1997, the Lord said this, Tracy, I need you to prepare. And I started preaching and talking in 1997 about the year 2020 is going to be the year where the number one disability will be mental disease. It will be depression. Be depression. In 2020, we got hit with something that caused the, the biggest pandemic was not the fact that there was a coronavirus. There was not the, the, the COVID. I immediately started broadcasting in 2020. I'm not concerned about the COVID. I'm concerned about the COVID. So when they say, what's COVID? I said, it's the soul transformation that will happen in a COVID season. I need you to know that there's a mindset that is now trying to infiltrate us and the whole world is being captured and captivated by a Marxist and a socialist. I wasn't going to go here, but I feel like there's something about it. I, there's a, being captured by a socialist and Marxist controlling spirit because it knows if I can control your mind, I can control everything. If I can control your emotions, I can control everything. I can control every decision that you make if I can control your emotions. If I can control your emotions and, and get you to think that I'm the only savior you have, then I will take your finances, I will take your life, and I will take, I'm here to tell you that spirit, that demonic activity is about to be cast out of San Diego. It's gonna be cast out of your family. It's gonna be cast out of this territory. It's gotta go. We here in this house are the people that we're gonna use our minds to say no. Pigs couldn't say no, but you and I can say no. Come on, practice it. Say it. No. Come on, say it. No. We have to understand that you have the power to say no. And don't you give up your power to say no by being someone that's compliant. Uh-oh. It's your fault. You prayed for me. Said, Lord, release this mighty man today. <laughs> she released that anointing. I went like this. I'm like, oh, my message shifted a little bit all of a sudden the last second and a half. I want you to know the, the enemies, there's more people that are dealing with anxiety, dealing with, with what I call scovid, dealing with intimidation, trepidation. They don't know whether or not their life is going to turn out. They, they're, they're making plans that they're hoping and like they're throwing the dice, hoping that it's going to come. I want you to know you have a destiny. 
Your life is not up to someone else's decision making. It's you and God that make the decision about where you're going. And it's not a roll of the dice what happens to you in the next season. I'm dealing with people who are, who are literally wealthy people, who are people influential, and they can't control their thoughts. People who wake up with anxiety, go to bed with anxiety, live throughout the day with anxiety, more and more people calling suicide helplines. We're breaking that today. Because this is not the kingdom of God. The reason a person feels that way is because they feel condemned. The flesh makes you feel condemned. The flesh makes you feel like you're never going to get out of it and there's only one way out. That's what the pig's response was. There was only one way out. We're going to suicide ourselves because the flesh doesn't give you a way out. The kingdom of God, the spirit of life gives you a way out. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, can I preach this morning? The Bible says, Romans chapter 1, it says, Therefore, there is therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk according to the spirit and not after the flesh. The flesh will never give you a way out. The Holy Spirit will always give you a way out. (laughs) Condemnation. You've seen condemned buildings. It means someone decided that it was not worth to live in. It was, there was no, it was not worth habitation. There was no value in it. So everybody abandoned it. And then it's so horrible, it can't even be restored. It can't be renovated. It can't be picked up and built up again. So they put a big sign on it and say, condemned or damned to be destroyed. Condemnation, that feeling of never giving up, never getting over and never winning is a condemnation, a damned to be destroyed. Can I tell you, that's not what God has done for you. Here's this man, he comes down, and if anybody is damned to be destroyed, it's someone who lives amongst the tombs. He lives where destruction has been. He lives where death has been. His whole meditation and his whole life is death. He's been crying out and yelling and and destroying stuff and breaking chains, and he is the one that should be condemned. But when he shows up at the feet of Jesus, he worships. He worships. He worships. That worship shifted something. There is no condemnation for you. There is no condemnation in your life. There is no, there's no proof of condemnation that you should be condemned, that you have been abandoned. The Bible actually says he would never, I wish I had that preacher. What was that preacher? I'd heard it. I heard it. He would never leave us. I, thank you, preacher. <laughs> never leave us, nor. Now, that's a promise. Jesus is so, so committed to you that he gives us amazing examples of being so far gone. And yet we think we're worse than these. Someone living in the tombs can't even control his thought process, can't control anything. And all he wants to do is break free and live free and live wild. I want you to know that's not what God's plan for you. They throw a woman at the feet of Jesus and they put her at the feet of Jesus and says, this woman is to be condemned. She is a, she is an adulteress. She needs to be condemned. And all the Pharisees come and grab their rocks and they're ready to condemn her. She needs to be put to death is what they said. She needs to be put to death. And then Jesus sits down and he begins to write on the on the ground and he writes. And and then as he writes, he says, "I, I want everyone who's listening to understand this, that if you have no sin, you can throw the first stone. I mean, come on, if you have no sin, go ahead and just pick up your stones and you be the first one. And he's writing, he's writing. I'm like, Lord, what are you writing? And I all of a sudden I just get this thing in my imagination. I think it's true. I don't know what yours is, but mine is true. he starts to write down her client list. She's caught in the very act. Caiaphas, Cephas. And and Caiaphas was the oldest, the first one, he's the first one dropped the stone. He's like, shoot. Pace, I got you on the other side. (laughs) 
the list, list keeps going. He keeps writing that list. And next, you know, there's no one there. And Jesus stands up and says, uh, where are your accusers? And she looks around and goes, there is no one. And he says, then neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Go and never lower your standards again. See, condemnation is not associated to what God wants. He wants you to never lower your standards, but he doesn't want you to be condemned. So he'll handle the condemnation. He didn't form you for destruction. He formed you for life. You say, well, you don't know, pastor. You don't know what I've done. You don't know who I am. You don't know how I've lived. Can I tell you something? I've seen the worst of the worst. I mean, we have a lot of examples. Can I tell you about the Mary Magdalene? Can I tell you about the, the, the guy named, his name was Saul and became Paul? I mean, there's a lot of people. He's a murderer. I mean, he's worse than, o, I mean, OJ, I mean, he's. We have examples of people who should have been stoned. Not in the Northwest kind of stoned. Not in the Seattle kind of stoned, because I'm like, ushers, you smell interesting. No, I'm just joking, I'm just not, no, sorry, not serious. But I do smell that on some people around in my city, so anyway, and some of my parishioners. <laughs> You have to know that there is therefore no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk according to the spirit. How many of you know spirit life is your life? Yep. Then the scripture says this about, aren't you aware that you are the temple? <laughs> well, I just felt a tingle there. Yes. Did you, you ever get a tingle when you're the Holy Ghost? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I live up inside of you. That's right. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, you must understand that not any, in any ordinary building can be a temple. Temples are designed for worship to come out. Temples are designed for God to show up. Temples are the meeting place where God and, and the worshiper show up. That you are the temple of God. And if you're the temple of God, then you are possessed by God. And nine-tenths of the law is possession, and God has possessed you. You can't be possessed by anxiety, possessed by anxiety. You can't be possessed by condemnation, and God has never destroyed his temple. God has never destroyed his temple. I wish I had someone that would say yes and amen. God has never destroyed his temple. So if you're expecting God to destroy you, it's not going to happen. God renovates, God restores, God raises up. He says, even, I'm, he says, even in, the, in the book of Acts in 15, he says, I'm going to do so amazing, I'm going to restore the tabernacle of David. God's about restoration. So no matter how far gone you've been, you're not that far. That he can't come and help you and reach you. And strengthen you. The moment this man comes down, he's, he's encountering Jesus. Jesus is coming off the boat. Jesus just commanded the storms to have peace. Peace be still and everything calm. And then Jesus comes and hits the shore. As soon as Jesus hits the shore, this man has been tracking Jesus coming to the shore. And he runs down from the tomb. Do you know that God's power is so strong, it can pull you out of the deepest and darkest places? He runs out of the tombs and comes down and falls at the feet of Jesus. And the first thing he does is worships. Do you know what happens in a temple? Yeah. It transitions him immediately from being a demoniac to a temple. Wow. Wow. And everything changes in his life. All he needed was worship. Was he still demonic? Yes. Was he still overwhelmed? Yes. Was he still challenged? Yes. But all he needed to do was worship. Come on, is there anybody that can have Thanksgiving in you this week during Thanksgiving that you can actually say a thank you to God? And if you will say thank you, something will shift on the inside of you and worship will rise and things will be different from this point on. I don't feel like I'm different, but are you worshiping? I don't feel like I've changed, but are you worshiping? Do you have a thank you in you? Is there a thanksgiving somewhere inside of you? 
If you can find that thanksgiving, then you'll find that God is so interested in making you his temple. He said, thank you. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. My, my, my wife's grandfather got saved at 80. 80. And he was a rough and tough guy. I mean, he was like the only guy in Amsterdam carrying a pistol. And, you know, it's like he's just, he's a fisherman, holds, I mean, just really, just really, just a cool guy. Had really cool hair, always combing it. Even when I met him at 80, 90-something years old, he's still, look at my hair. He whip a, whip a comb out, like, look at this. It's like, okay, Fonzie. All right, so it's just... Uh, and he got, when he got saved at 80, he told everyone, he goes, I'm stopping, I'm going to stop smoking cigars. And they said, why? He said, well, I'm a, I'm a temple. He goes, I've never been a temple before. It hit me just like that. I said, oh. He said, I've never been a temple. All my 80 years, I've never been a temple. It changes the way I'm going to live the rest of my life. He, lives, he lived on into his 90s. In the day that he chose, he, he's, he got dressed, put on all of his gear, put on, you know, get, and he says, I'm going home. They're like, they're like no, you, you're, you're not going to go home. He, he was, you know, he was just having an operation for a hernia. And he goes, no, I'm going to go home. And they're like, you can't go home. You have to stay here and recover. And so he dresses up and he's a temple. Puts on his tie, lays down in bed and goes home. Wow. Come on, how many of you know when you're a temple, you choose? You, you don't let some, you don't let coronavirus, you don't let, you don't let stuff that has no dealings with you and God and you in the temple. The, that stuff has nothing to do with your destiny. It has nothing to do with your purpose and who you are and why you're here on the earth. I was preaching at a men's, a men's event a while back and uh, I did an altar call for people to come and receive the Holy Spirit, be filled with the Holy Spirit, manifestation of speaking in your heavenly language. And gentleman comes up and, and he, I didn't know he was coming up for healing. He came up, I thought he was coming up for, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He gets filled with the Holy Spirit and as he gets filled with the Holy Spirit, he stands up the next day and tells a testimony that I, I have been healed of all of the, the leftover symptoms of coronavirus. Now his coronavirus symptoms weren't just, nor, they weren't like, you know, I, any symptoms is demonic. I just think we just need to get rid of them. Get healed now, all of you. Let's just do a blanket wipe. <laughs> healed. But he was, he's, a, he's a nurse practitioner. He sees about 20 clients a day before he had coronavirus. And then after that, he couldn't see half of, not even, not even half, not even a quarter of the clients on a daily basis. He could work two hours. Then he would get this incredible headache and he have to sleep under his, under his, uh, he would have to sleep under his desk, and then maybe he can get up and see some more. He was, he was just going to, to file for, he had actually filed to get disability, and he was going to be done in his career and his job because he couldn't think. He couldn't, he couldn't operate. He couldn't, he couldn't do anything. Uh, he couldn't do the workout. He would try to do any workout, couldn't work out more than five minutes, and he was a CrossFit before corona hit him, or, or this virus thing hit him. He came up and he got filled with the Holy Spirit. There was no prayer for healing people. It was only him becoming the temple. When he became the temple, God kicked Dagon out. I want you to know when God, when God shows up and you become his temple, say, I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. As soon as you become God's temple, everything that doesn't belong in God's temple gets removed. Anxiety is going to go. Shame is going to go. Guilt is going to go. Viruses are going to go. Cancer is going to go. Every sickness, everything that tries to condemn you is going to leave you. I break that depression off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, you. I break it off. I see it. I break it. I take it from you. I take it from you. It's been trying to sneak up on you. It's been trying to family. There's a family thing that's been trying to haunt. I break it in the name of Jesus, and I command it to release you and let you go in Jesus' name. You, look, you got it? Yeah? We got it? Oh, man. I got to go. We got another service. Shabba, ba, 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 shabba. 
The Bible says that God has given you inside of you the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the grave lives inside of you and will resurrect you as well. You have resurrection life inside of you. I, it doesn't matter what's been affecting you, what's been coming after you, the resurrection life, if it can pull Jesus out of the grave, the thing, the, the, the most hated person in hell was Jesus. Hell hated Jesus. Hell does this, I mean, it, the hell did everything through all of its darkness when Jesus was on the cross. It blocked out the sun. It blocked out every star. It blocked out everything to try. And it was so dark. It said it was the deepest level of dark that has ever been in the earth because hell was trying to smother the light. And yet it could not. The Bible says it was impossible for him to be held by it. That same power that was impossible to be held down is inside of you. It's absolutely impossible. Take it. It's impossible for you to be held down. This man was set free. Jesus was standing, sitting there, standing there. This man was sitting there and the herdsman went and told the whole city, the guy that was a lunatic that lived up in the tombs, he's set free. He's, he, he, something happened. They came out and they saw that he was sitting there with his, in his right mind. And they said, Jesus, you're messing up our economy, setting people free. I mean, <laughs> why are they trying to shut down Awaken Church? The demoniacs. It's not going to happen here. They said, Jesus, we would rather have a demoniac than have your freedom. That's what's happening in America. They would rather have de demon-filled politicians. They're not just, there's principalities. That's why the demoniac said, you can send us out of here. You can send us out of there, but don't take us out of our territory because a principality is territorial minded. Oh, this is, this is deeper than I expected to go in this service. This is like, this is like our Wednesday night or something kind of service, you guys. And the reason you're here is you're here to cast out demonic spirits out of territories, out of family members, out of family territories, out of things that God has planned for your destiny. Jesus says, well, I guess our work is done here. He crossed that water just to find that one person. And he says, we're getting back on the boat and heading back over somewhere else. And that man's like, here we go. Shoot, come on. I got my bags packed. <laughs> and he starts to hop up and skip up into that. And Jesus like, wait, well, uh, you don't get to come with me. I, I said, that's so intense. You loud. You're not allowing him to come. Why aren't you giving him permission? He goes, I do not permit you to come. And I was so conflicted when I read that. I said, because you, you, you permitted the demons to ask their request. And this man, you're not permitting him to ask his request. And I realized the demons were destined to be removed. This man was destined for bigger than just getting in that boat. He says, if I let you come here, you're going to live beneath your, your calling. I want you to go and tell everybody about what just happened. I want you to give them the Thanksgiving report. I want you to tell everybody the things that have taken place. And I'm sending you to your home and to your family and to Decapolis. Decapolis is 10 cities. He went and preached and became the evangelist and the controlling power of 10 cities. Where he was controlled in one city. Come on, somebody. He became the controlling power in 10 cities. How many of you know this time for you to rise and stand in the assignment of God? That thing has been trying to hold you down. It's been trying to keep you back. It's been trying to stop you from being who God's called you to be. But this is the day that the Lord has made. And you shall rise up. You shall rise up. You shall rise up. Come on, anyone get their no today? Say it with me. Say it with me. We're not going to allow condemnation, shame, guilt, fear. As I close here, I want you to stand to your feet with me. How many of you are ready? <laughs> Thank you. You guys are like, I'm already on my feet. 
Thank you, Jesus. How many of you feel that God wants to do something for you this morning? Just go and lift your hand. Just receive whatever you, whatever you, whatever he has for you, just receive it. He has a breakthrough for you. He has a breakthrough for you. It's not the same for everybody. Everyone here is getting their own personal breakthrough. Just receive it. That, now, why are you asking me to lift my hand? Because that's the form of worship. You say, I'm a temple when you lift your hands. You say, I'm a temple when you lift your voice. And when you do that, it doesn't matter what demonic thing, what activity, what circumstances have been in your life. It all begins to shift because you've made a decision. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Come on, reach out and say, I am the temple. I thank you, Father, that there's, that there's change happening. Chains are being broken. True chains are being broken. True fear is being broken. Anxiety is being broken. Insecurity is being broken. The powers of darkness are being broken right now. It's being destroyed. We thank you that cancer is being broken and destroyed. We thank you that lupus is removing, that diabetes is removing, depression is removing. We thank you that, that, that every sickness and every disease, everything emotion and physical that would try to attach itself to the temple of God is being removed right now in the name of Jesus. We release the peace and the health and the hope of God. Someone, you've been trying to have a, a child and God's releasing that to you today. You're getting your breakthrough. Thank you for that, God. Man, there's so much activity in the spirit. Just, just for one, one, we don't have a lot of time, just 30 seconds, just receive, just start thanking him for it. Come on, be thankful right now. Just thank him for your breakthrough. Thank him for your healing. Thank him for the health. Thank him. Thank him right now. We thank you for this in the name of Jesus. If you put your hands down for one second, keep your head bowed for me. There's some of you here that came and you, you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to make sure that before I transition that you you know that he loves you and he's, he's yours and you are his. I'm going to count to three. And if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you want to make sure that you're right with him, I'm going to ask you just to show by the lifting of your hands. Is there anyone that you want to make sure that you're right with God? You want to just make sure that you're, you're, you're right with him, that you are his temple and that he's come to live in you. One, just lift your hand if you're ready. I see your hand back there too. See your hand. Anyone else? Thank you. I see your hand over there. Anyone else? You want to make sure you're right with God. Thank you. See your hand there. Back there in the corner. See yours and see yours there as well. Thank you. Anyone else? You want to make sure that you're right with God. You want to make sure. Thank you. See your hand there. See your hand there. Thank you. See yours there. Thank you. Anyone else? You want to make sure that you're right with God. Come on. This is your opportunity. He just wants you to, to open yourself up. I see your hand there as well. Anyone else? Just one more, one more time. Anyone else? You want to make sure. I see yours. Thank you. You want to make sure that you're right back there? Thank you. See yours? You want to make sure that you're right with God today. That you are his property. That he possesses you. Let's pray this prayer together. Say, Father, thank you for Jesus. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I thank you that I'm forgiven of all of my past and my future is bright. Wash me. Make me clean. I declare you are my Lord and eternity is where I will live with you. Heaven is my home. I receive my purpose here on the earth. Fill me with the Holy Spirit in Jesus name. Come on, let's give the Lord a big clap and a shout. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenchurch.com.